Well, good day and a very warm welcome to everyone taking part in this online video conference on saving swallowtails. My name is Mark Collins. I'm chairman of the Swallowtail and Birdwing Butterfly Trust, and I'm here with my colleagues Martin Partridge and Rob Chetwood to host um, this groundbreaking event. Now, a word or two about the swallowtails. The swallowtail family includes about 570 species, making up just 3% of all butterflies, and indeed only 0.3% of all Lepidoptera. But despite the relatively modest number of swallowtails in the world, they do include some of our most beautiful, treasured and well-known species, and for this reason are potentially very useful in conservation analysis and priority setting. All too often insects and other invertebrates are overlooked in wider studies, simply because their diversity is considered too difficult to deal with. Today we will hear seven papers about swallowtail conservation on the ground, all of them concerning species in the subfamily Papillionini, which is the largest subfamily with about 510 species. Conservation action is also needed for the Mexican Baronia butterfly, the only species in the subfamily Baroniaini, and also for many species of Parnassiines, such as the Apollo butterflies, numbering about 50 species. We hope to hear more about such species in future conferences. Now, another reason why swallowtails are so useful in conservation thinking is that their distribution is very wide and to a large degree mirrors the distribution of biodiversity on Earth, at least on land. A quick glance at this uh, slide, this table, shows that swallowtails are found as far south and north as Chile, Alaska, Siberia and Tasmania. But their strongholds are clearly in the tropical latitudes. If you look at the table on the left, you'll see that around the 0 to 10 degrees, you have far higher numbers of species occurring than in northern and southern uh, latitudes. Looking at distributions from a continental perspective, Asia has the strongest diversity with Indonesia, the Philippines and China hosting a full one third of all swallowtail species, which partly reflects the evolutionary significance of island biogeography in that region. But further afield, Brazil and Madagascar, amongst others, are also very important in terms of diversity and endemism. Now, 36 years ago, IUCN published a book written by me and Mike Morris threatened swallowtail butterflies of the world. This assessment covered the conservation status of the entire family of 570 swallowtails, species by species, and concluded that about 10% were threatened and a further 10% were poorly known and of conservation concern. Now this analysis enabled conservationists for the first time to use a group of butterflies to identify critical conservation areas through a quantitative analysis and to establish conservation priorities for a family of butterflies at the global level. And with the help of Tim New of the IUCN Species Survival Commission, I prepared a follow-up action plan, which was published in 1991, identifying 34 projects in all parts of the world. In the intervening 30 years, further assessments have been made by IUCN and the Zoological Society of London, to bring the data into line with the contemporary methodologies and technologies used to construct the IUCN Red List, with which I'm sure you will all be familiar. This has led to some re-evaluations based on new data, but the overall picture for swallowtails has not changed a great deal. Now, in my closing two slides, let me say a word or two about the task that lies ahead First of all, despite the enormous growth in awareness and action to slow down and reverse the loss of biodiversity, the international community continues to overlook the biggest group of, it, of species, the insects. We do need to change this attitude. Insects make up nearly half of the 12 million or so species currently believed to be on Earth today. And yet, in the most recent overview of extinction risk published by the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, using data from WWF and others seen here in a table from the Global Biodiversity Outlook, swallowtails don't appear despite data having been available for decades. In fact, there are no insects considered at all. The column on the left, the list on the left, left shows cephalopods, gastropods, fish, birds, mammals, crustaceans, sharks, corals, conifers, reptiles, 
dicotyledonous plants, amphibians and cycads, but no insects. Data set size cannot have been an issue here, since several of the data sets that were examined are of a similar size to the swallowtail data set, including the cephalopods, gastropods, conifers, reptiles and cycads. Moreover, whereas the swallowtail data set covers all the species in the taxon, these other data sets clearly only cover some members of their taxon, not all. I wrote to the Secretariat, to WWF and others, to seek an explanation, but have not received the courtesy of a reply as yet. We still have a lot of work to do to get the international conservation community on board. And finally, we are about to hear some of some great work being done across the world to conserve swallowtail butterflies. These research teams are doing superb, innovative work, and our hope in the Swallowtail and Birdwing Butterfly Trust is that the lessons learned will encourage projects on many other species known to be in trouble, such as Papilio chicae in the Philippines, the picture top left here, Parides bercholanus from riverine forests in Brazil, on the bottom left, and Papilio and Ar Aristophontes and Graphium levasori, two endemic species from the Comoro Islands. Well, I do very much hope you will enjoy the presentations, I'm sure you will, and I look forward to seeing you again um, at the questions and answers session at the end of today's conference. Thank you very much.